Okay guys, today we're going to be breaking down how I carry my 9mm handguns, CCW, for self-defense. Without any further ado, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so you can continue to see more awesome Alaska content just like this. Now, let's jump right into it. Okay, so for the first part of carry 9mm, obviously, it is going to be pretty important to have a handgun. Now, for this particular handgun, this is the Glock 19X, and it is clear for the video, but for this part of carrying a 9mm, I'm not actually too particular about the types of handguns that I carry, so long as that they're reliable, and most importantly, that they fit my needs and my goals for carrying. So if I'm going to you know, be wearing very so if I'm going to be needing a smaller handgun, I'll choose a smaller handgun. If I can bulk up to a larger handgun, I will usually try to. Generally, I do run the 19X because, especially in this current climate, it is very nice to run a 19-round magazine with one in the chamber, giving me a total of 20 rounds. That gives me a pretty good ability to stop just about any threat that I would realistically come into contact with. So I do prefer the Glock 19X, but this is just one choice. And like I said, I have others and I'm not terribly picky about the type of handgun so long as it's functional for what I need it. So that is the handgun choice. Now getting into some of the things that are more important to factor. So the second thing for me that is a very important piece is carrying a secondary magazine. Now some people, especially nowadays, tend to run a secondary magazine built into their holster. Obviously this one doesn't quite have that ability, but even if it did, I'm not sure I would really want it because I generally like to run my secondary magazine off or on the side of my body. So this tends to reduce the bulk of the holster. You know, it's less that I have to hide in one area. I can off place the magazine. And it's also partly just a kind of muscle memory thing for me. I'm very used to reaching around to my left side or my off side and grabbing the magazine. So I can do it very efficiently, very effectively. And so making sure that I have a secondary magazine is very important because of what I'm about to discuss in a little bit. But within reason, most clothing options should allow you to have a secondary magazine and a backup mag. And of course, this is a 19 round uh, magazine in addition to the 19 round magazine that I carry in the handgun. So still running a pretty decent amount of ammunition. Okay, so now let's discuss ammunition in, in specific, and this is where I think that carry a 9mm is most important, is that you give a large consideration to the ammo that you're carrying, and really that your ammo meets your objectives, you know, the types of threats you feel that you will realistically encounter. So for me, when carrying 9 mils, regardless to whether it's a true hollow point or something a little bit different, uh, all of my ammo is plus P, and the reason why I think that plus P should be the baseline or the standard is that, at least for me, I come from shooting a lot of larger caliber handguns, and 9mm really doesn't have that much recoil. Even plus P ammunition does not have that much recoil itself. I mean, you notice it more than a regular 9mm load, but it still is not particularly heavy recoiling. So I like to carry 9mm plus P or plus plus P plus as my baseline, all of my self-defense ammunition will be either plus P or plus P plus. Um, and really what that does for me from a practical standpoint is it just gives me greater velocities which increase penetration or barrier penetration. It also gives you greater stopping power or greater kinetic energy in your bullets. So that is the primary reason to go to a plus P or plus P plus and that is the reason why they are my baseline and why I always carry them in all of my self-defense loadings. So the next component to ammunition choice is how I carry my ammo. So this is my off magazine or my secondary mag and this is my primary magazine and how I will set up my primary and secondary magazines is my primary will be more traditional hollow points. Now my preference is Hornady Critical Duty with I believe the 135 grade bullet with a plus P loading but that stuff is not the easiest to find at the current moment and we are in a bit of an ammo crisis. It is luckily letting up a little bit but by and large we still have you know it is still not easy to come across ammo more 
moreover, self-defense ammo. So this stuff right here is Winchester Defender. It's not my favorite loading, but it is a 124 grade plus P, and that is what I try to carry in my magazine that is in my gun. So the first 20 rounds will be a traditional hollow point or Hornady Critical Duty, which is a kind of modified hollow point, but still basically a hollow point. So these are, you know, what you'd most likely need or want to have for most traditional self-defense situations. Now, now in my secondary magazine, what I will usually carry, so Underwood Ammo's loading of the Extreme Penetrator, and the primary reason why I have these in my secondary magazine is, as the name kind of implies, the Extreme Penetrator isn't fully designed to be a type of ammunition that stops within an object. You know, this is not the ammunition, this is not the type of ammunition that mushrooms out or, you know, enlarges itself in any way. What it is truly designed to do is to penetrate. And the primary reason why I carry this is that if I need to either switch magazines or if it gets to the point where I need my secondary magazine, it's likely due to the fact of barrier penetration say shooting through windshields, shooting through things that might adversely affect the bullet. Now, once again, this doesn't mean that this bullet will be perfect going through things. You still have to account, like if you're going to shoot through a windshield, the bullet will drop. You still have to account for that, so it's not going to be absolutely perfect. But the hope and the aim to carry the extreme penetrators is that they will go through barriers and go through objects with greater ease and retain greater speeds and greater kinetic energy for when they hit the target. So essentially if the hollow points so essentially if the hollow points fail to resolve the issue, the hope is to have something that has increased barrier penetration and reduced material deformation. Um, built into it so that I can hopefully end the threat with these types of rounds as opposed to these types of rounds. Now, realistically, you know, what does this really count for? I'm not sure, but this is the way that I approach carrying 9 mils. and while you may end up not running two different types of 9 mil ammunition, this is my preferred setup to have plus P's. I still think it's a really smart idea, especially because I would recommend, you know, go to the range, shoot a couple loads of plus P or plus P plus and see, you know, what it actually feels like because oftentimes through a 9 mil, especially something like this Glock 19X that has plenty of grip, um, plenty of real estate on the grip, you're really going to be able to control those rounds very well and very accurately and still with a great amount of speed so going over to more powerful rounds really doesn't hurt you it really only helps you in the long run so the last thing i will say and i've said it in other videos before but this is the way that i carry night mail for self-defense now being in alaska a lot of people ask me you know is this what you carry outdoors is this what you carry to defend yourself against bears or other wild animals and that's a yes and a no so during our winter, obviously bears go into hibernation, and therefore I do actually usually run a 9 mil in the winter, because most of the time, if you're actually going to be encountering wild animals in the winter, they are going to be things such as wolves or other smaller animals, or something like the extreme penetrator will actually do a great deal to defend yourself against those types of smaller wild animals. But no, by and large, in the summer, when I am in the middle of bear country, I have at least a 44 Magnum loaded with uh, hefty rounds. They are usually either 300 grade uh, 44 mags that push out at about 1150 feet per second, or they're going to be 270 grade, or they're going to be 270 grade bullets that push out at 1250 feet per second. So I'm carrying specialized 44 Magnums for bears and of course bear spray for actual bear country. Now, like I said, in the winter, I'm not concerned about bears, so I will usually run a 9 mil outdoors, but I do not run this thing in the middle of bear country with these types of loads, expecting to defend myself against wild animals. So that is a firm no. I, 
and most of my time that I live is not necessarily out in the woods. I do go outside a lot, but of course, every day I'm, you know, in a reasonably urban environment, so having something like a 9 mil is more practical in those types of settings and climates, because obviously running around with a 44 revolver everywhere is not only impractical, but also not the best idea, because you only have six rounds of a very potent and oftentimes overpotent round for anything else but large game. So that is what I have to say about the 9 mil when I carry it, of course, in urban environments and in the winter time. But aside from that, when I do carry my 9 mil, that's how I have it loaded and with that specific reasoning in mind. Okay, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.